from Mustang. We got some in studio special guests here this morning. If you're just joining us, mainland longtime mainland coach Bob Coffey and his son Ty, who was an offensive lineman, senior, who just played his last game. We're talking some high school football with these guys and kind of reminiscing a little bit about Coach Coffey's career. Uh, coach, 30 years. Man, how do you put that into perspective, you know, a day a day or two after your final game? <clears throat> One year at a time. I, you know, I just <laughs> I look back and I can't believe it's been 30 years. I just can't. But you know, we've taken one year at a time, and and uh, uh, you know, it's just it's just it's it's an amazing uh, that I could last that long. Uh, thank God I have my wife Donna to, to help me with it. But you know, it's been a long, uh, hard road, road, but it's been a good road. Uh, a, a lot of ups and downs, and you know, I wanted to get into this a little bit uh, of how much this community means to you and how special these people have been. Obviously, a couple years ago, a uh, huge tragedy with uh, four of the players on the team. Uh, losing their lives in, a, in an automobile accident. How difficult was that for you as a coach to get through that? I mean, and, and you really handled it as, as well as anyone could. Uh, that, that had to have been such a tough thing to go through. And But but I think in the long run, it really defines what this community is all about. It does. And, and you know, um, I've lived here all my life in, in Linwood. Um, you know, and it really the bike path does tie us all, all together. It, it was a very tough time uh, um, four years ago uh, with the boys. But you know, we just we took we we did what we had to do, all of us, mm -hmm. and uh, we stayed together. And uh, this community is my my home, and um, I'm thankful for it. I, I know uh, you know those families have a lot of reverence for you, and and the way you handle that situation. Uh, how how satisfying is it for you to be a guy in their lives who helped them through such a difficult time? It's very satisfying, and. and um, I, you know, I, I just took one day at a time and one moment at a time, really, and because things really slow down at those times. Um, and there's so many; it, it became such a complicated issue with so many boys, you know, with, with so many tragedies at one time. And but all the, the families stuck together. We stuck together. We did. We continued to live our life, uh, you know, and also uh, honor the boys as well uh, at the same time. So. You know, it's something that uh, the guy put on us, and and we all handled it and uh, well, and and you know, we we are recovering, you know, f yeah. still from it. Sure, yeah. Uh, you know, let, let's turn now to a little bit more of happier times, and and obviously won five state championships. Uh, what was that first one like? You, you know, we mentioned uh, during the break how how you had the twentieth uh, reunion for those guys last night. Uh, how cool was it seeing those guys and and just tossing around those memories of that season and and winning that first state title had to been such a thrill for you, especially up in Camden, Woodrow Wilson. Uh, we saw the we they had the film on last night at the, at the reunion and uh, I, I just couldn't believe that that we could go up there and do that to that team. They they were uh, you know arguably the best high school football team in a long long time in New Jersey and and we were a heavy uh, underdog and going up there and uh, and and winning big was. Was really really something, and it started. It really started the tradition of winning at Mainland. Now, I, I know you've uh, <clears throat> played against one one of my former classmates, Keith Elias of at Lacey. Uh, give us a couple of memories on him, and, and what a great running back he was. You know, uh, I didn't play football, but I remember watching those games, and mm -hmm. and we played. We actually played Woodrow Wilson two years in a row to win the state title back in the late '80s, and uh, those guys came in really confident, and we were just like, hey. You guys are in trouble, man. We got Keith Elias. Yeah. Such an when you see a kid like that, do you know he's going to be a pro pro professional athlete? You kind of think so because you know I just remember how the combination of strength and power and quickness uh, and and toughness that he had. Uh, he was really something, and he made a difference in in our game. Um, I guess in, in the very beginning of the fourth quarter, he broke a, a sixty yard run. We had we held him, you know, all the way up until then, <laughs> and, but we knew sooner or later he was going to break it. He did, uh, and uh, and Lacey beat us. And went on to win uh, the uh, the South Jersey Group Three Championship, but uh, he was really something. He really was. Who who are some of the the top notch players you've been been able to coach? You know, in the last thirty years. Well, I'd have to say uh, my quarterback in two thousand eight, Brent Caprio, was a fabulous uh, uh, football player. Um, Tony DeSalle, he was on the team nineteen ninety five team. Uh, Dave Klemek and John Stone, Tim Watson, who was. Uh, who now is at Cedar Creek and sure. um, was at was at Rowan and uh, in Seattle, um, but there were we, I've been blessed to have some great great players and uh, <clears throat> you know has, has Coach Watson reached out to you at all? I know you know they're playing. He's had a little bit of experience with with these championship mm -hmm. games you know a couple of years ago, but um, you know they're facing a tough team in West Effort uh, uh, next weekend for the state championship. Mm -hmm. Have you had any conversation with him about that game? 
I haven't, uh, but yeah. I do see him all the time. And, and I, I saw last time I saw him was at the barber shop up <laughs> on Shore Road up at Ryan's. Uh, but he, uh, you know, he's such a nice guy. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't really need my help. <laughs> Uh, how about, you know, maybe a player or two that you've coached over the last 30 years where maybe nobody knew their name but was just really a joy to coach and maybe a kid who, who he didn't think would even make the team as a freshman and end up being, you know, one of your senior leaders, that, that type of player. Any of those guys stick out for you? They do. Um, the 95 team, that who I saw last night, uh, those guys, the linemen, um, were, uh, were very average-sized kids, uh, 180 pounds, 195 pounds, uh, T.J. Wolf. Uh, Buddy Broom, you know, all guys who I'm, this, we're, I'm the same size as those guys, and and they were great, great players. You would never think that they could play with the courage, uh, and 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 you know the, uh, it's just a great toughness that they did played with. We're talking with uh, mainland coach Bob Coffey, who's hanging him up after a 30 year career. Uh, son Ty is also in studio with us. Uh, Ty, take us through your thoughts a little bit on on your dad. I mean, it's got to be such a hard thing to be the coach's son. And to try to live up to all the success that he's had, how did you handle that throughout your high school career? Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, he's always been on the fact that, you know, you live in your own, you know. I, I didn't ever need to really live up to anything. Um, you know, it's it was great being the coach's son. You know, it's not like he treated me any differently. But, um, you know, just being able to be on both sides of the spectrum um, and understand some things that the players might understand or um, anybody else might not understand, Um but yeah, I mean, it's always cool. I mean, uh, just it's been a blessing. Yeah. You ever come home after a game and be like, Dad, why the heck do we keep running that thirty-two dive on third and four? <laughs> what are you thinking, man? Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like my mom was saying in the conversation, you ask him, it's like, Dad, why'd we do this? Or you know, why'd we throw on first and ten? Why'd we do this? And he explains it to you, and you know, you eventually understand it. Um, you know, he's been around for thirty years. <laughs> so I also, you know, sometimes kids my age kind of forget that you know, he's been around longer than, well, twice as long as we've been alive. Right. So <laughs> he kind of has first dibs on that one. Coach, how, how much have you learned about the high school athlete in terms of today as opposed to 30 years ago? Any differences, any similarities? The differences are they're bigger and they're stronger, okay? Um, there's a lot of... There's a lot of uh, there are a lot of similarities, and, and you know, still some of the kids there come up, come out every, uh, you know, every game day. They play injured. They play, you know, uh, with you know at, uh, you know, at a high level with not being real comfortable. Um, it's a little, it's different now. So the the parents are, are a little bit different now. Um, you do have to tweak things a little bit more as a, a professional high school coach. And um, but you know, the game will, will, is is one is still one and lost with. With great players, with great courage, teamwork, you know, dedication, and all those things, you know, remain constant. I'm going to try to bait you again here. This is this is might be your final <laughs> shot to say something to all the parents out there. What what do you want to say to them? Like, hey, get off my back. You know, we we uh, won five state titles. Come on. I, you know, <laughs> Sully, Sully, honestly, I've always kept in perspective. Uh, the the uh, overwhelming majority of the parents are have been great, um, and I would never ever let you know one or two. Um, you know, sway me to, to think that that wasn't the, the case. But but all in all, it's been a great 30 years. Um, I've made a tremendous uh, uh, you know amount of friends, and and the parents have been great overall. They really have been. Man, trying to get some controversial radio mm -hmm. here. Boost the ratings up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but honestly, I, I always keep that in perspective. There's only a couple that you know every year that might uh, <laughs> that might. How, know, how much year. how much different did you coach when you became the parent of a high school player? You know what? It, it changes you, just like it being a teacher with a, having a kid. Um, you know, you, you get to see the perspective of, you know, you, you really want to treat all the players like they would be your son. And it, it really does change you as a, uh, as a coach. You know, you, watch, you, you try to watch your language. You try to watch, you know, um, try not to be impulsive, you know, uh, when someone does something uh, uh, wrong. Uh, and then you, you teach, you know. Now, I know you're a pretty humble guy, but was there even a split second there after that game on th Thursday where you said, I'm the man right now? <laughs> no, sorry, nope. I no. never thought that. I, Come I, on, I, man. I, I, <laughs> I, I, no, I really, I, I really. I'm, I'm the big product. man on campus right now, no. walking off with the trophy <laughs> and the plaque. No, I'm a product of, of a lot of uh, pe people's uh, efforts and energies, and I, I, I know that. Uh, talk a little bit about, real quick, about your coaching staffs over the years. I mean, mm -hmm. you must have coached with a, a ton of great coaches, and, and these guys, I don't, I don't think people really understand how much 
uh, assistant coaches put in. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got families with young kids, and they're taking up all this time to work with the high school kids, make them not only better players but better young men. Uh, I guess you, you can't say enough about about guys who do that, and and even you know the the cheerleading moms and and those coaches and mm-hmm. everybody putting in so much time to make us such a special thing, and it it really does take away from from their personal lives to a certain extent. It does, and over the years, I've had some great assistant coaches. Um, you know, Chuck Smith at Oakcrest was a wonderful coach for me. Um, the the coaches I have currently ha- uh, have on my staff now have been with me for for many many years. Brian Booth, um, Billy Kern, um, Antoine Lewis, uh, coaches the defensive line. He played for me and went to Villanova. Uh, Marcus Perry um, played for me, went to Rutgers. Uh, so I, I've really been blessed with uh, with with many uh, great great <coughs> assistant coaches. If you had to pick out one thing that really stands out in your mind, you know, would it come from your coaching career, your playing career? Uh, when you when I say high school football, what's the first thing that jumps out in your mind? Mainland. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Just uh, it really has been my life, and and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud to have done it. I thought for sure you'd have a green sweatshirt on coming you in know here today. Going what, to, what's going I, on, Coach? I, yeah, if I was doing a TV <laughs> show, I was going to wear mainland, but I just <laughs> threw this on, get up, and get get out of the house. Uh. Ty, we're talking with uh, Ty Coffee here, son son of Coach Bob Coffee. He's also in studio with us. And I want to thank these guys for coming in on kind of short notice, and it's great to kind of reminisce about the whole last thirty years of mainland football. Ty, what stands out in your mind about your dad, and and do you separate the dad from the coach, or is it all just one guy? Um, I mean, the coaches yell at me sometimes on the field when I call him dad. Um, <laughs> there's one coach in particular I've known my whole life. He's always yelling at me when I call him dad. He tells me to call him coach dad. <laughs> but, um, you know, no, nah, I mean, um, he's it's it's tough sometimes balancing that, you know, because at home, you know, if your dad yells at you, you always kind of have something smart to say back. And on the field, you know, if he yells at me. At Especially when you're 16, 17 yeah, years old. Yeah, you know, so it's tough to hold it back sometimes just because, you know, you're with each other so much. You're bound to bigger now and then. Um, but, no, nah, I mean, yeah, it's been interesting. Uh how how proud are you of his accomplishments and and like we said all that stuff that happened on Thursday with with the plaque and the and the you know the special game ball and got to be a, a sense of pride for you as a player and, and his son to say you know yeah that that's my dad you know had a, had an awesome career and you know tell tell us a little bit about what you were thinking after that game it's just it's so special um you know I've like I said you know I've been around this for ten years and I've only heard stories of you know the ninety five six and seven team and um. You know, all of those games aside, um, I was probably just most proud of him when the four boys passed away and the way he handled that and how he, you know, kind of was able to bring the whole community together. Um, I mean, he's been nothing but a role model to me. And, you know, I only hope that I can be half the parent or, you know, father that he is. Coach, we got about a minute left here before we sign off. This might be your last interview. You know, retired coaches, they don't get interviewed too much. Yes, okay. <laughs> I was thinking that coming over. <laughs> Uh, what do you want to say to, to all the people out there, the community that have supported mainland football for all these thirty years? Uh, sort of, sort of your sign off here. Okay, I'll give well, the mic over to you for, well, for a th- couple seconds. Thank you all so very much for uh, so many good years of, of uh, you know of support, and uh, I'm I'm honored and I'm humbled to have served as your head football coach. Short and sweet, just like Bob Coffee would want it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys, for coming in and joining us.